looking good this morning. Turn to somebody and say, you're looking good. Now turn to the person that you didn't say. For, no, that's okay. All right, turn to Psalm 63, and uh, I'll get there in just a moment. I want to talk to you. In fact, let me do this real quick. Tiana, come here. Hey, do we have any other college students that this is your last Sunday here before you go back to school? Any other college students that's leaving us, like going out of town? That, huh? Who else? Come up here. Come up here if this is your last week. I don't want to miss this opportunity to pray for you guys. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on. Y'all know each other. Yeah. Okay. Where are you going to school? UT Austin. UT Austin. Where are you going? Rockhurst University. Where? Rockhurst. Rockhurst University. Where's that? In Kansas City. In Kansas City. Where are you going? North Texas. North Texas. And you're going to Texas Tech. These kids are leaving us. But you know what? We have strong light and salt to go impact these communities and these colleges where these students are going. So I'm going to ask you, if you do me a favor, to stretch your hand towards each one of them because we want God to bless them, anoint them, use them as they go off to school. Father, we thank you for every one of these students. God, we know that you have great things in store for each one and that you have a purpose and plan for their life. We declare today that their steps are ordered of you. I pray that you would guard them and protect them. You would put the right people in their lives and you would take the wrong people out. That you allow them to be surrounded with people that would influence them for the good. And I pray that they would be a strong and positive influence on every person they come in contact with. That you protect them as they go to school, that you allow them to do well in their studies, but let them all be a testimony of how awesome you are to everybody they come in contact with. We just pray your blessing over each one of them today. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. 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 Give them a great big hand, will you? God bless you guys. I love you. Have a great semester. And don't forget home, okay? We're home. Don't forget where we are. And I love these guys. I love these students. They're world changers. It's what Andrew calls these kids, world changers. And I believe they have the ability to change the world. Amen. All right, I want to talk to you about something today that I think will make us all better. Why I lift my hands? Or why I lift your hands? Why do hands get lifted? (laughs) When we uh, come into church, I want to talk to you about this specifically because I think that we often, we, and I'm talking about just the church in general, we fall into a trap when it comes to God and when it comes to church. We fall into this trap of thinking that it's all about me or it's all about us. Western Christianity does this. Western Christianity puts us at the center of everything. And we've got to remember That we're not here today because of us. We've come to worship him. Remember when the wise men made their way to where the baby Jesus was? They said, we have seen the star in the east and we have come to worship him. When we come here, it's not about what you can get out of the service. But that's what we do. I wonder what he's going to teach me today that I've never heard before. We kind of make it about us. Or I wonder if they're going to sing songs that I like. Or I wonder if it's going to, you know, we we judge everything based on what it does for me. It's easy to fall into that trap. And I want to remind us that it's not about us. It's about him. It's about what we can give to him and what we can provide for him. Too often we treat God like the cosmic Coke machine. We come and we put in our coin, we put in our offering, we put in our time, we put in our prayers and we, okay, God, what do you have for me? Come on. That's not what church is. We don't come here to put in our time, to put in our offering, offer up our prayers and see what God has for us. We've come to worship him and we do a lot of things right here at Freedom, but there's something I want us to do better and that's our worship. I want us to worship more passionately. I want us to worship more intentionally. I want us to worship uh, like we really believe that we've been delivered from sin. Like we really believe we've been delivered from hell. Like we really believe we've been brought out of that darkness and into light. I want us to worship like we really believe that. Like we really believe that there's a difference between heaven and hell 
And by finding Jesus, we found the way to avoid hell and gain heaven. I want us to worship with that kind of knowledge. Thank you for one amen. I appreciate that. I'll take it. I want us to worship differently. I want us to realize this is not about me, us. It's about what we can offer him. So why I lift my hands? See, hands, hands are unique. Hands are different. With our hands, we, we comfort and we correct. With these same hands, we've held our children. And with these same hands, we probably popped them on the bottom a few times. With these same hands. A little boy walked into a store and uh, he was with his mother and the owner of the store was there behind the cash register and the counter and he had a jar full of suckers and he told the boy, he said, hey, reach in there and grab you a handful of suckers. And the boy kind of oh, got real shy all of a sudden. So the owner of the store reached in and grabbed a handful of suckers and handed them to him. He took the suckers and when they finally got outside, the mom asked him, said, why did you get so shy? That's not usually like you. You don't act like that. He said, his hands are bigger than mine. <laughs> Smart boy. He knew he'd get more suckers, but yeah. The fact is our hands are unique. With these hands, we can wring them in despair. We can fold them in idleness. We can clench them in anger. Or we can use them to help someone. We can use them to worship our God. Now, I know this. I know that lifting hands can be awkward. They can be very different. I'm curious. How many of you, by show of hands, were raised in a Pentecostal, charismatic, full gospel church? Let me see your hands. Okay, hands down. How many of you, by show of hands, were not more here that were not raised in a Pentecostal charismatic church. Okay, out of those of you that said, I was not raised in a Pentecostal charismatic church, and some of you are going to say, why are you using that? Is that us? Yes, that's us. Okay. <laughs> that's us. I didn't know that. I thought we were just Freedom Church. Okay. <laughs> anyway, those of you that were not raised in a Pentecostal charismatic, full gospel church, out of those that just raised your hands, how many of you were raised in a church that lifting hands just wasn't done. Look at that. Look around. Look around. Okay, so those of you that say, you know, that's just, that just, I wasn't raised like that. You're not alone. And so it's no wonder that, you know, we have such diversity when it comes to our response and worship to God. But my job is to teach you the Word of God. Your job is to respond to the Word of God. So I'm just going to teach you what the Bible says. Now, this is what I know. I know lifting hands can be awkward. If you walk in, those of you, so many of you that said, I wasn't raised this way. You walk into a service like this, people have their hands raised. It's a little awkward. It's like watching two people make out. You know, it's like, I know it's real, but I, I just don't want to look at it. You know, you see people lifting their hands and they're really engaging in worship. And you know, you, it's cool. It's real, but you just... It's awkward to look at. I get that. I can remember when I was like in fourth or fifth grade, one of my best friends, Michael Gabriel, he was raised Catholic. I was raised in an Assembly of God church. I brought him to church with me one time. Didn't even think anything about it. We're sitting there and people start lifting up their hands during worship. And he punches me and he says, are all these people wanting to ask questions? I went, no, they're worshiping. You know, I didn't realize it was just foreign. He'd never seen people lift their hands in worship before. And he, are they, I thought, well, yeah, it does look like they're all wanting to ask a question. I said, but that would be weird. Uh, we're all different. So I want to talk this morning just a little bit about, about this outward expression of something that God is doing inwardly in our lives. Because when God starts doing inwardly a work in our lives, there is an outward expression of some kinds. Lifting hands, it's an expression of worship from our hearts to God. It's an expression of worship from our hearts to God. Look at Psalm 63, verse number one. David is in the wilderness. He's out there hiding. He's just trying to stay alive. And he says this, he says, you, God, are my God. Earnestly, I seek you. I thirst for you. My whole being longs for you in a dry and parched land where there is no water. And maybe somebody has come in today and you kind of find yourself in this same position. You find yourself kind of in a dry and a parched place where just kind of a barren place. Things just spiritually really 
They aren't where you really want them to be. Let me tell you something. You're in a good place this morning because I believe God's going to meet you there. He's going to meet you right where you are today. I thirst for you. My whole being longs for you in a dry and a parched land where there is no water. Verse 2. I've seen you in the sanctuary and I beheld your power and your glory. God wants to show you his power and his glory. Even today, right here in this very service, God wants to show you his power and his glory. And some of you, you're going to experience that before this service is out. You're going to experience the power of God, the glory of God. You're going to feel something like you've never felt before. Because at the end of this service, we're going to sing a song. And we're going to all lift our hands and worship to him. Now some of you are saying, watch me. I will. I'm going to watch you. Because I got ushers and we're going we're gonna to push everybody's hands up. Now this is what, I want to challenge you to go somewhere you've never gone before. Now some of you are here saying, lifting hands, is that all you're challenging people to do? Did you remember the show of hands earlier? We're all in different places. Now I'm not asking anybody to run around and start a Jericho march, okay? All right, don't do that. And I'm not asking you to start slinging your hands and hitting people next to you. I'm just asking you to express outwardly something inwardly that God is doing in your life. Some of you, you want to respond deeper. You want to respond more intimately. You want to respond to God because he's doing something in life and you're going to experience him. You're going to feel him and you're going to want to respond. And so we're going to respond in worship. But look what he says. Verse number three, because your love is better than life, my lips will glorify you. Because your love is better than life, my lips will glorify you. In verse four, I will praise you as long as I live. And in your name, I will lift up my hands. In your name, I will lift up my hands. Now, David, he's teaching this long before even contemporary worship became cool. He's out there in the wilderness There's nobody instructing him. He's not performing for anybody. He's not leading a procession in worship. He's just responding to God. And he says, because your love is so awesome, it's better than life itself. My lips are going to praise you. They're going to glorify you. And with my hands, I'm going to lift up my hands to your name. This was an outward expression of something that was going on inside of him. Nobody was watching. Nobody was looking. So our hands raised are not for anybody else. We don't do this so we can look more spiritual. We do this because we are responding to something that God is doing inside of us. Now, Tim Hawkins nailed it when he talked about the different positions of hands being raised in church. How many of you have seen that? How many of you have not? Oh my gosh, it's hilarious. I can't even begin to do it. But he, he talks about, you know, the hands. Because we, we're all different in here. Some just got their hands in their pockets, you know, during worship. And they start flapping their elbows. And you think that's really getting out there, you know. It's just the, the wing flap, chicken flap thing. And then, then some of you venture out and you've got your hands like this. This is the carry the TV. Carry the TV. <laughs> Widescreen TV. <laughs> you know, normal size TV. And then you've got the, my fish was this big. Some of you liars, my fish was this big. So, you got the touchdown, touchdown. You know, the Rocky. We all, in fact, Starla showed me a picture just yesterday. I asked her if I could see it because she knew what I was talking about. And she showed me pictures of how in one service, she had hands like this. She had hands like this. She had the crucifix, you know, out here like this. Hands all kinds of different ways. Well, our hands are all different. We show our expression in different ways. But the fact is, I don't think you can genuinely experience God's presence and not show gratitude. I don't think you can genuinely experience his presence in your life and not want to express gratitude in some way. In fact, look at 1 Timothy chapter 2. Paul is giving Timothy instructions on New Testament worship. There are a bunch of new Christians They're just learning how to worship, how to respond, how to follow Christ. And so Paul gives Timothy some instructions here. And here's what he says in 1 Timothy 2.8. It says, therefore, I want the men. Everybody say the men. He says, I want the men everywhere. That meant at Freedom Church as well. That's what he meant when he said that. Pretty sure. 
I want the men everywhere to pray, lifting up holy hands without anger or disputing. Now listen, sometimes in the scriptures, when it uses the word man, it's talking about mankind, meaning men and women. Not this one. This is talking about men. Those of you who are men. He says, I want the men everywhere to pray, lifting up holy hands without anger or disputing. Why was he calling the men out? Because he wanted the men to lead the way. So I'm calling the men out today. I want the men to lead the way. Don't let your wife out worship you. Are you kidding me? Come on, man. This is my come on, man moment. You know, you got the ESPN come on, man moment. This is my come on, man. Come on, man. Don't let the children out worship you. Don't keep your arms folded. You got hands to worship him. Use them to worship him. Now, I got to be honest with you. I hate saying it like that. Because that means I wasn't honest with you before. But that's not what I mean. But here, uh, guys and girls are different. I know. We're different in different ways. Starla and I are really different. Starla sees a little baby. I mean, she is just smitten by babies. She's the baby whisperer. She can smell a baby a mile away. You know, she wants to hold that baby and love that baby. Uh, I, I just, babies, I like babies. I love <laughs> But most guys would, would get, get this. They would understand this. You know, babies, they're cute. They're there. They're, they're, but they, 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 they cry, they poop, and they spit up on you. You know, and, and that's not cool. But something happens. Something changes when that little crying, pooping, spitting up baby starts reaching its hands up towards you. I got a little baby right now, Izzy and Scotty, both about the same age. And they're both at this stage where, the grandbabies, and they both do the same thing. Whenever I see them, especially Izzy, we've just got this little connection. And as soon as I see her, her hands go straight up. Well, shoot, I drop whatever I'm doing. I don't care if I'm late. I don't care what's going on. That little girl reaches her hands up to me. I'm stopping and I'm picking her up and I'm going to hold her. Here's what happens. Whenever our hands reach out to God, God stops whatever he's doing and is drawn to you. That's what James 4, 8 says. Draw near to God and he will draw near to you. So yeah, our hands are an expression of worship, but our hands are also a form of drawing near to God. And when we draw near to God, he he draws near to us. But hands are not only an expression of worship, If you're needing to take some notes and you need some points for this, okay? Expression of worship, drawing near to God. But number three, it's also an offering of praise. An offering of praise. Look at this scripture in Psalms 141. It says, Lord, I'm calling to you. Please hurry. Listen when I cry to you for help. Accept my prayer as incense offered to you and my upraised hands as an evening evening offering. Accept this as an evening offering. I bet there's plenty of you here today that have never considered that when we're standing here in worship and we're singing our songs and these hands go up to God, that that's actually an offering to God. As, as, as much as pulling out money out of your pocket or going online and clicking an offering and sending it to the church, our hands upraised to him are an offering to him. When you come and you serve and you go out and do evangelism or you serve in the nursery or with children or as an usher, as a greeter, or you work in the coffee shop, you consider that an offering. You're giving of yourself back to God or back to the church. Or when you play an instrument or you pray, pray as a prayer partner, that's part of your offering. You're giving it back to God. You're serving. Our hands are an offering to God. Meaning we don't lift them up just because I don't know what else to do with my hands when I'm singing. No, we lift it up as an offering to God. You give it back to him. In fact, Arana said to David in 2 Samuel 24, he said, I will not offer a sacrifice to God that costs me nothing. Meaning that when we offer these hands, they have value. Our hands have value. And when we lift them up to God, it's a valuable offering to God. Not only are our hands an expression of worship, Not only are they reaching out to God and him reaching back to us. Not only is it an offering of praise, but our hands last are a form of battle. It's spiritual warfare. 
In fact, the best example I can give you of this is when the Amalekites attacked the Israelites and Moses said to Joshua, choose some men and go to battle. I'm going to go stand point on the top of the mountain. I'm going to lift my hands up to God. I'm going to pray. And in Exodus chapter 17, look at what happens. Exodus 17, verse number 10. So Joshua fought the Amalekites as Moses had ordered. And Moses, Aaron, and Hur went to the top of the hill. As long as Moses held up his hands, the Israelites were winning. But whenever he lowered his hands, the Amalekites were winning. Winning. Losing. Winning. Losing. Winning. Losing. This wins. Look at verse 17, verse number 12. I'm sorry, chapter 17, verse number 12. It says, when Moses' hands grew tired, and they took a stone, they put it under him, and he sat on it. Aaron and Hur held his hands up, one on one side, one on the other side, so that his hands remained steady till sunset. So Joshua overcame the Amalekite army with the sword. You see, you can't do this on your own. Now, please understand, I'm not talking to you about walking around with your hands up all the time, okay? Say, how am I going to get anything done? Obviously, that's not what I'm talking about. And I'm not even talking about our entire time of worship, having to have our hands raised. But you need to understand the value of your hands, that the hands are an expression of worship. They are reaching out to God. Yes, they are an, an offering, a sacrifice of praise to God. But it's also declaring war. And some of you are in a battle for your life right now. You're in a battle for your soul. You're in a battle for your children. You're in a battle for your marriage. And you need to lift those hands up to God and declare, I'm winning in Jesus' name. I surrender to you. Because listen, there are two things that uplifted hands have symbolized pretty much all throughout history. One is victory and the second is surrender. Somebody wins a ball game. You don't have to tell them to lift their hands up. Those hands go up. They're up in victory. Rocky put those hands up when he climbed up those steps. Why? He was victorious. Our hands go up when we win. You don't have to tell somebody when they win the lottery to lift up your hands. Hands just go up. It's a symbol of victory. But it's also a symbol of surrender. When somebody puts a gun in your face, hands go up. It's a sign of surrender. But here's the cool thing. When your hands go up and surrender to God, you get victory at the same time. Victory and surrender happen simultaneously. So whenever we come to God and we say, God, I'm declaring war on my marriage. I'm declaring war on this attack against my marriage. I'm declaring war on this attack against my finances or this attack against my children. I'm declaring war and I'm putting it in your hands. When you surrender, you get the victory at the same time. Somebody ought to say amen. amen. Now listen. We can try to do this alone or we can incorporate the family of God. Say, so you know what? Sometimes I need somebody to lift my hands up. I need somebody to stand in the gap with me. I need somebody to pray with me. That's why we have prayer partners every single service that will stand here and will agree with you in prayer. What are they doing? They're lifting your hands up. Maybe not literal, but figuratively, we're lifting your hands up. We're standing with you in prayer. And you think about these hands. These hands have been through so much. Your hands have been through so much. I look at my hands, they change all the time. I've got scars. I've got busted up fingernails and knuckles. I've got a broken finger here that never straightened back out. I've got scars from knife cuts and from stupid things I did. And just you, you do too. These, these scars and these hands, they tell the story of our life. But with these hands... They propped me up when I tried to learn to walk as a toddler. These hands have given. These hands have received. These hands have fought. These hands have healed. These hands have been a part of just about everything. But listen, when we come to the end of our life, God's going to reach out and through his son, Jesus Christ, he's going to take me by the hand. And he's going to walk me into my promised land. He's going to walk me down streets of gold. And with these hands, I'm going to be able to touch the face of my Lord and Savior, the one who died for me, who shed his blood for me, who gave me a chance to live victoriously and have eternal life. I'm going to be able to touch Jesus with these hands. So today, I challenge you. Use your hands as a tool to worship God, to honor God. Do me a favor. Stand to your feet all over this place. I'm going to have the worship team come back out. And we're going to take this opportunity just to lift up our voices and to lift up our hands to God. 
I challenge you to go somewhere you've never gone before in your worship to him. You say, well, can I start here with my, no, you can't start there. Can I start right here with the TV? No, no. Touchdown. We're going for a touchdown, all right? No crucifix, okay? Don't hit anybody in the eye. Don't hit, don't hit anybody in the head. Just personally, avoid somebody's personal space. Go vertical. Here's what I want you to realize. Some of you need to declare war today. And when you lift up those hands, God's going to start fighting for you. Isn't it interesting that Moses would stand on a mountain and as long as his hands were raised to God, God gave the Israelites victory. But as soon as the hands went down, the Amalekites started winning. Isn't that crazy? But you know what that says to me? That when I stay surrendered to God, he gives me the victory in every area of my life. When I start making it all about me, I start losing. Stay surrendered to him. Some of you, as you surrender to him here in just the next few moments, some of you will be the first time. Some of you just may need to, to go to a whole nother level in lifting up your hands to God. And remember, it's not about the actual position of your hands. I know some, they have to do it like this. Some want to do it like this. You know, the single ladies, they do it like this. I, I, I get it, I get it, I get it. This is an outward expression of something that's going on inside of here. Come on. Let's let him know what's going on inside of here. Let's declare to him, Jesus, you're on the throne of my life. You are number one in my life. I'm declaring battle today and God, I want you to give me the victory. Come on. Let's lift up our hands to him right now and let's declare today. I'm expressing my commitment to you, Lord. I'm declaring war today. I'm offering a sacrifice to you today in Jesus' name. Come on. hold your hands right there just for another moment your eyes closed all over this place there's some of you that walked in this place today and when I was reading the scripture earlier about David being in a dry and a parched land hungry thirsty seeking you you resonated with that you're in a place where you feel like you're in a barren place God is coming to you right now 
even right now as I speak, you feel his presence upon you. He wants you to know you're not alone. You may have felt like you were in a barren, dry, and parched place alone in your own wilderness, but God is showing up right where you are. And he's revealing himself to you. He wants you to know how much he loves you. He cares about you. He's wrapping his arms around you as your arms have outstretched towards him and you've reached out to him. He is drawing near to you. And he is picking you up and caring for you. And he's showing you just how much he cares about you. That you can make it through whatever you're going through. You will overcome. You will come out of this valley. You will come out of this season. And you will come out so much better than before. You will see the hand of God working in your life and through your life. In fact, you will begin to see things begin to shift even immediately. Circumstances around you are going to begin to shift. Things at work are going to shift. Things at home will shift. Things in your own personality and your own outlook will begin to shift. Where before you've been so prone to negativism and criticism, you're going to begin to see the positive things about where you are and what you're going through. And you're going to see God showing up powerful and strong. Where you've missed it before because of your lack of focus, you're going to see where God has been there every step of the way. You're going to be amazed. You're going to see his power and his glory in your life right now. Heads still bowed all over this place. Would you just put your hands down just for a moment? I want you to take the hand of the person next to you. Just grab them by the hand. And we're going to pray for one another. In a sense, we're going to lift up one another's hands right now. Because somebody you're holding hands with right now has been so weary and so fatigued. They felt like they couldn't go another step. They couldn't go any further. But your prayer today is going to breathe new life into them and allow them to realize they can make it. Some of you know exactly what's going on in the person next to you. You're married to them. They're your friends. But some of you are holding hands with somebody you've never met before. That person is facing an impossibility in their life. And your prayer for them is getting ready to breathe strength and courage into them. That's going to allow them to win. We're going to lift up one another's hands right now. Father, we pray for one another all over this room today. I pray for my brother. I pray for for my sister on my left and my right. Lord, some we know what's going on. Others we don't. But God, you know every situation. You know every problem. You know every fear, every worry, every concern, every mountain, every attack of the enemy. And we know that as we lift up one another's hands today, that God, you will give us the victory. That the enemies that are coming against us must fall in the name of Jesus. That they have no power over us for the power of the greater one lives inside of us. Greater is he who lives in me than he who lives in this world. And I declare victory for my brothers and sisters in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. And amen. Now, amen. Do me a favor. Just bow your heads one more time. One more time all over this room. Just before we conclude, I'm going to ask you to raise those hands for another reason. There's some of you in this room, you've walked in here today, and things are not right between you and the Lord. Some of you have never surrendered to Christ. You've never made Jesus the Lord of your life. And others, you've just wandered away from your faith. You're doing your own thing, and it's time for you to come home and surrender to Jesus. It's time for you to make Jesus the Lord of your life. And this is your opportunity. All over this place, from the front to the back, left to the right. When I count to three, if you say, I'm ready to surrender to Jesus. I'm ready to make him number one in my life. Then on the count of three, I want you to slip up your hands. I want to pray for you. One, two, three. Just hold it up right now. All over this place. Yes, 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 yes. Many all over this room. Man, God sees every single hand. Now we're going to all pray this prayer together. Nobody's going to pray alone. I want you to pray it out loud and strong. Everyone say, Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for sending Jesus to die on the cross for me. Come into my heart. Wash away my sin. And today, with uplifted hands, I declare that I surrender to you once and for all. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Now give Jesus a hand clap of praise. Amen. Amen. Now listen, before you leave this place, if you raise your hand to accept Christ, I want to encourage you to do two things. 
As soon as I bless you out and we are dismissed, I want you to make your way over to the I've Decided wall. Write your name on the wall. Declare, I've decided to follow Jesus. It's good for you and it's good for the next person that comes in and sees names on that wall. This, it says to them, if they can decide to follow Jesus, then I can too. Your testimony helps somebody else. And then also, there will be some pastors and prayer partners over there. We've got a book we want to put in your hand. It says, now what? It will help you with your next step in following Christ. Sign the wall. Get the book before you leave this room today. Man, thank you so much for being here today. Thank you for pushing in just a little bit more. Let's continue to worship passionately and let's keep reaching people intentionally for the glory of God. Come on. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you and give you great, great peace. God bless you. Have a beautiful day, everybody.